Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me this morning, or this evening, or whatever time you're joining me, from wh wherever you are. I'm so happy to have you. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're about to speak. I thank you for just ministering to me last night in such a powerful way. Um, Speak to me, speak through me, let your Holy Spirit endow every word, let every word be purposeful. Lord Jesus, use my lips as your speaking board. Use my ears as your sounding board. Lord Jesus, I praise you and I worship you and I declare that today's sermon will not only touch the hearts of those listening, but those from for generations to come. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh, so hi guys, hope you had a good week. Um, I hope you're living and learning a lot through this pandemic, I know my am. Um, many of you know that I'm an author. What you don't know is, um, I originally, um, I recently, um, became a, a member of a book club. Not, like, a technical member, but I read all, all the books in this book club, uh, uh, puts forth, um, I'm behind in my reading, but that that's besides the point. And this is this is a recent thing. I I just um, have read two books so far, and I well, let me just say I kind of felt like. A, like a kind of a not good <laughs> Christian because um, these books are not Christian books. Like it, it's it's through a church of this book club, but these are not Christian books. Um, uh, but I still, but, but the, the books are so intense and so involved and have these really involved stories and I'm embarrassed to say <laughs> that um, so far uh, from my personal reading I don't I I don't really like them so I thought I thought Lord these are the books I should be liking and like these so, these all intense stories, they're better than, than the stuff, they're more intense, more involved than the stuff I usually read. Why aren't I liking these books? Um, and I just felt like I was, because <laughs> I read a lot of books, but they're different kinds of books. Like, I'm a chick book person, so... Um, so when, when I started reading these books, um, sometimes, uh, they lagged and, like, it had a hard time to pick up, and, uh, some of the plots for me were kind of hard to follow, and I fell asleep, um, uh, during reading one of them because it was just for me not going anywhere. I I like a lot of like drama. Like I'm very dramatic in my reading. I like uh, murder, violence, all that kind of stuff going on. And I thought, Lord, I need to change what I'm reading. This. This should be the stuff that I should find exciting or, or whatever. 
and I was comparing my, myself to to this this book club, and I was like, I am there. I said, there's something wrong with me if I fall asleep during these books. Help me. And I said, and he said, you're comparing yourself to this person or to this book club because uh, you, 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 you don't seem, seem to enjoy these books. And um, he's like, it's good to to read outside your comfort zone, and that's what I I led you to. But in reading outside your comfort zone and learning new things and learning new textures of books, don't compare yourself uh, to what this book club is reading versus what you read um, or, or what you write because he said there's an audience for you out there um, and I was feeling that I was not <laughs> I was not up to snuff and this is when he gave me this title um, mastering, he, he said, he said, he said, Rachel, you don't suck. Cause I'm like, I suck. I should, I should be knowing things like this. It should be exciting to me. I shouldn't be falling asleep at my computer reading this. And he was like, Rachel, you don't suck. You're just different, and your your giftings are different. And I put you onto this book club to take you out of what you usually read, not to change you, but just to expand you. And he would say the same thing to you. He didn't bring those group of people uh, to you that are different to feel inferior, for you to feel like you suck and you're no good. Um, he brought those people into your life to expand you, to expand your horizon, just like he brought those books into my life. And he says, tell them, tell them this, he said, tell them that they don't suck. They're just different, and they have different giftings. And the thing about comparison is you can always uh, compare up or down, and it never ends. So the first thing that he told me to do uh, in mastering comparison is realize that I'm different and that's okay. Realize that I like different books and that's okay. And let 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 this book club book expand me, not change me or make me feel in, inferior. And he would say the same thing to you today too. Don't let the people the different people that he's put in your life make you feel inferior or like you're not good enough or you're not Christian enough. Let them expand you and show you the different ways of being and let them add to your life, not take away from your life. The, the, the danger with comparison is there's always going to be someone better than you. There's always going to be someone more read than you. There's a, read as in book read. There's always going to be someone who is who is more of anything um, 
than you. So you just have to settle that this is me and that's it. And let people's um, different ways of doing things not make you feel inferior, but let their different ways of doing things expand your mind and expand your horizons. Like what he said to me about this book club, let their book selections expand your mind. Uh, not that you stop reading the books that you love and whatever, but just let it expand your repertoire. So instead of looking at that mom, mom's lunchboxes and how she decorates them and say, oh, I can, oh, I wish I could do that. Why not learn to, why not start simpler? Uh, why not just learn to start with something you can do? And eventually work your way up. It, and who knows? You might come up with something better than what that mom does for her kids' lunches. But if you don't, so what? If you don't have that car, and if you don't have those shoes, so what? You are still the person that God has created you to do, to be. The, the danger with comparison is while you're comparing over here and over there, you're missing your gifts. You're missing your talents. You're missing, um, you're missing what you bring to the world. And like I said, there is always somebody better than you. And there's always somebody that doesn't do things as well. So comparing yourself both ways is, is a danger because one of them can make you feel vain and superior. The other one can make you feel like you're... You're crappy and you're not a good person or not a good Christian or not a good whatever. So let that person's difference expand you. Don't let it cripple you. Don't let it cripple you. And if you, you know, just celebrate their differences, don't compare what you have uh, to what they have because we're all different and the lord said something to me i i said i don't i don't write like that i don't i don't uh, do books like that and he's like if the, and i and i said if this is what you if these are the kind of books you want lord i i don't do that and he's like um He's like, Rachel, there's an audience for you. There's an audience out there who needs whatever books you write. Like, like sometimes when I'm listening to a book, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I could uh, write like this. It's so beautiful and so and so poetic, and I'm just not like that. He's like, I don't want you to be like that, because that person's already fulfilling your lane. By comparing yourself to other people, you're not fulfilling what God has for you. And by not fulfilling what God has for you, there's a whole populace of people that are missing something. You you add to the world. You are significant. What you bring to 
to your friends, to your society, it's important. The body of Christ needs you. They don't need that other person. That other person is doing what they need to do. And the danger is if I'm trying to be like you and you are trying to be like me and we're trying to fill the same lane, there's a whole bunch of people outside of that lane who are not getting serviced. But then if you do things how you do it, and I do things how I do it, there are people getting service on all sides. But then if we try and just do things um, like each other, there's a whole populace of people that are missing the gospel. And I'm going to talk to preachers for a second. A few, I think it was last week, I said there's going to be uh, new ways of preaching and new ways of leading worship and God is going to reveal new and innovative ways. And the reason why he's going to do that, there are people right now who are dying for the body of Christ, who are dying to get to know the Lord. But the problem is nobody is ministering to them in a way that they can grasp it, that they can get it, that they can fall in love with the Lord. And like, because everybody's doing uh, things basically the same way. There are differences, but basically... um, Whatever your church liturgy is, whether you sing two songs or three songs or four songs, and then too fast, too slow, and then you have a sermon where you sit at a pulpit and preach for a half an hour or an hour, um, it's still a liturgy that you're following. But there's a whole bunch of people who would respond to different ways of doing it, like different ways of doing it artistically and scientifically and whatever ways you're bent. And you, you want to know why uh, you've always been kind of offbeat. Because God has made you uh, offbeat for a reason. Because there are people uh, that need to that need what you have. There are people that need um, the word broken down scientifically. There are people with science and using logic and formula and whatever. That's what I mean by scientifically. I don't mean like um, evolution or whatever. I mean they need to uh, they need to have it broken down using science. There are people that need to have the word broken down using art. Uh, like artistically and stuff like that, through painting and through music and through all that. Uh, There are people that need to have the word broken down using uh, motorcycle gang talk, you know, and because they ride motorcycles, so they respond. Uh, But um, when you talk, they respond to Harleys and whatever motorcycles out there. Like, even gaming. Like, there are people that would respond to the word of God using gaming examples because they're gamers and they're like, oh, I get that. Or ships or anything you could ever imagine. So there are people uh that need uh, whatever 
industry it is you're in, uh, um, there are people that need the information that you have to give the way you have to give it. Um, and especially in the body of Christ, and we are so stuck with doing things a certain way because we've all, always done it that way that we need to break the cycle and we need to understand that we are individuals so, um, we are all are individuals and God has created us to be individuals and and as long as his word is there, and as long as you're speaking his word, um, it is, that's it. As long as you're bringing his truth and his light and his life to people in whatever industry you're in, that's all he wants. Um, and he also said that um, if if you continue to, to compare your, yourself to others, you're going to miss out on part of you that he wants to explore. He wants to reveal to you about yourself. There are parts of you that you don't even know yet that God wants to reveal to you about your, about you. But you're so busy comparing yourself to this person and that person. Brother, sister, let them walk their road. Because God has assigned them to walk their road. And God has assigned you to walk yours. And... When you open up yourself to what he wants to show you about you, your life will become richer, brighter, better, and you'll be a much better you. You don't compete against other people. You compete against yourself. Paul says, I beat my own body into subjection. So you don't beat anybody else's body into subjection. You beat your own. Because at the end of the day, if you try and beat somebody else's body into subjection or try to compare somebody else's activity to yours, what is it going to leave you except disappointed or the other side with an inflated ego? Like, it's just, it's just won't be, um, what he wants from you. Um, comparison is also dangerous because, like, you're, you're not accepting how, how God made you to be. Because remember... Uh, the Lord breathed his breath into you. The, from conception, the Lord gave you your gifts, your talents, your bent, your whatever. He gave that to you. And by you comparing yourself and not using your skills, you're kind of saying, well, what you did for me is not not good so you're kind of telling god how you made me is not good so i'm gonna try and do it over there and you're missing the greatness inside of you i i pray that greatness will rise from you accepting your gift and accepting yourself and know that God didn't make a mistake with you. See, I grew up all the time 
thinking that maybe God made some kind of mistake with me. I'm waiting to get healed. I'm all that. But not realizing that there was a whole populace of people with disabilities who needed to see um, a person with a disability preaching and still striving and still thriving to be who God has called her to be. And I think people who are well-meaning will often compare you to uh, to people. Like, they'll, they'll be like, why aren't you doing this like this? Because they just, they don't have the capacity uh, to think that God wants to do something different with you. And God said today, I will, if you will accept yourself and stop comparing yourself, I will break generational curses and bring generational blessings into your life. You're praying about stuff. You're praying about, like, um, having a new this, and you're looking at uh, Facebook and seeing their families going on vacation and, and your family has to stay home or their family is uh, making lunches like this, well, you just have to uh, put your kids, kids' lunches in a plastic bag. And you're kind of missing out on the greatness of what you have um, focused on what they have. There is so much more inside of you. And you, if you stop um, comparing yourself and focus on the greatness in you, the Lord will bring you to new levels that you wouldn't be a, that you wouldn't that you that you wouldn't be able to comprehend and he wants to do that but you need to open your mind to what what is not only good about you but great about you and exceptional about you beyond beyond anything you could ever dream but you have to be open to that because some people are so close to clo close to that that they don't understand the greatness in them so they feel that this person is doing something great i need to do that too uh ignoring that they're probably already doing something great and uh god is already ready um using them and doing something great within them. But they're not seeing that because they're seeing other people going, wow, this is great. I should be like that. I should be doing something like that. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't look at other people and go, wow, that's an idea. I should try that. But let their let their activity or what they're doing expand you and challenge you and and cause you to want, want to try something different. But don't let it demean or or make you feel inferior because you feel that you're not do, doing it like that person. So guys, I will see you later. Um, um, I will see you later. I hope this sermon encouraged you. It certainly encouraged me when he, when God, uh,
sp spoke to me about uh, letting this book club expand my mind, let, uh, letting it, it enrich my thoughts or bring me on to different reading styles and, and not to let it be the feel inferior because I fell asleep in the books, but just to let it expand me. So I hope my experience and this sermon uh, really, um, really helps you. When I think of comparison, I think of uh, Jacob, not, not Jacob, um, Rebecca and Isaac, um, Isaac loved his son, his first son, and Rebecca loved their second son, uh, so he, like, the story goes that um, the first son was supposed to get the birthright, but his his mother his mother sent him outside and gave um, and gave her second son um, a smooth. Uh, wool to so he could feel like his brother because his father was blind so and then he ended up giving the what the first son had to the second son because so, so i think the problem is they compared uh what their two children had one of them had favoritism for one, and one of them had favoritism for the other. So they compared what their two children ha had, and because of that, it kind of screwed up the the order of what was supposed to happen. You see, um, if you compare, 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 it can screw up your life. It can change your life. So be careful with comparison and understand that you have different gifts. You're different. So what if you can't do that? So what if you don't have that type of shoes? So what if you don't um, don't have all your ducks in a row? At least you're trying, and the Lord can see that you're trying. I want to say to somebody struggling out there with anything, the Lord sees that you are trying, and he respects that you're trying. He sees that you're trying. He sees that you're just struggling, and he knows. And... Don't worry. Don't worry. He's about to break through. He's about to break through that barrier. He sees that you're trying. The reason why you're comparing yourself is because you think some, somehow it's what God wants. So you want to be a better Christian or a better person. So you're comparing yourself to this person because you think that's what God wants. And God wants me to say that he wants you. He wants you exactly the way he made you. He wants you exactly the way you, the way you're formed. For, for us writers out there, he wants you to write exactly the way you write. Um, for us preachers, he wants you to preach exactly the way you preach. He wants you to do real estate the way you do real estate. 
he wants you to, you know, do business the way you do business. And he will give you ideas and ingenuity to work with your gift. If you would just stop comparing yourself to others, he will give you, you're praying for ideas and ingenuity, but you're also comparing yourself. What's stopping the Lord from giving you ideas and ingenuity is because you're comparing your stuff to that other person's stuff. You're comparing your ministry to that other person's ministry. And God can't do it because your comparison is blocking your destiny. I'll say that again. Your need for comparison or your constant comparison is is blocking your destiny. Remove the comparison and the ideas and ingenuity and in, and innovation will flow like you wouldn't believe and it will touch people around you. It will touch the world. It will touch the hearts and souls of people that you don't even know. People that you don't even know right now are waiting for you to stop comparing because they're waiting for things the way you do it. They're waiting for teaching uh, the way you do it. They're waiting for ministry the way you do it. They're waiting for biz business to be done the way you do it. Um, but you're so busy compare, comparing your uh, companies to that company over there that you can't see it. Stop comparing and he will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you will not have room to receive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, guys. I'll see you later. The Lord will work back that concerning me. Oh, sooner or later, it'll turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. Hi, Brian. I see you.
So bye guys, take care.